church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. It is truly a joy and pleasure, a true honor to be with you this, this morning. I'm extremely thankful to, to be before our audience. <laughs> One that I know we'll talk back to me. Amen. amen. I've certainly been thankful to God for the partnership we've shared with First Press and the opportunity to share with them in that beautiful TV ministry. But I will tell you, there is nothing like being in a place where people talk back to you. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to try not to lose myself this morning um, and, and, and stay disciplined. I know Pastor said earlier, uh, prayed that for the next hour I can just focus on the living word. I can promise you I won't be here for an hour. <laughs> but nonetheless, I certainly thank God, thank him for the prayer. Um, to the pastor of this beautiful ministry, to the officers and to all of you, um, thank you for being here this morning. Glory be to God for all that God is doing in and through our lives. Amen. Amen. I want to thank my praise team. Well, not my praise team, but my praise team uh, for being here. Hey, let's give my hand. Glory to God. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, my minister of music, Brother Flanders, they have been faithful throughout this pandemic and have been willing to do whatever has been asked of them. And they've done a beautiful and powerful job in worshiping God through music. I'm extremely thankful to them for this year. I want them to know that. And I thank them for being here this morning and accepting this invitation. We do have a word from the Lord this morning. Um, it will be coming from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version this morning. But before we hear the word of the Lord, let us, let us pray. Lord, we are extremely grateful and thankful for this opportunity to gather in this place. I want to worship you. Yeah. To render to you what is due your name. Yes, yeah. Lord. And so now, Lord, as we prepare to receive your word, we ask that by your Holy Spirit that you give us eyes that see, ears that hear, and hearts that are receptive to the truth of your gospel. For your glory and your glory alone. In Christ's name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. And it reads as, as follows. And I think you guys have a tradition here of standing for the reading of the word, so we want to honor that. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Amen. Amen. It reads as follows. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house yeah. and sat by the sea. And great multitudes were gathered together to him. Yeah. So that he got into a boat and sat. Yeah. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Yeah. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Yeah. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Yeah. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Yeah. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. You may be seen. Amen. I want to speak this morning briefly from this title. So. 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 2020 has been a year for the history books. And I am certain many plans were spoiled. Hopes and dreams even shattered this year with the arrival of COVID-19. Do I have a witness? Yes. And yet there are many who have truly learned what it means to lean and depend on God. Ah. 
With 2021 on the horizon, we once again find ourselves contemplating what the new year may bring yeah. to us. Yeah. And despite the uncertainty that still surrounds us with the pandemic still well and alive, the vast majority of us will enter 2021 with high hopes and aspirations. Yeah. As a matter of fact, many of us are now fashioning our New Year's resolution. In light of this fact, church, I was led to this text commonly titled, The Parable of the Soul. And what is clear from the onset is this, having high hopes and aspirations simply won't be enough. Ah, so. uh, that is to say, with expectation, yes. we must add action. Ah. Let me say that again. With expectation, we must add action. Yes. By the way of the text, it's simply stated this way. We must sow. Yes. We must so, and our sowing, brothers and sisters, cannot be conditioned upon what is happening around us. Let me just say this morning, I know many are hoping that Congress can get this relief package passed, but I want the church to know this morning, we are not depending upon Congress to provide for us. If they pass it, glory be to God. If they don't pass it, glory be to God to God. Yes, if we hope to receive, to achieve those hopes and aspirations, we must take action, we must sow. So this morning, I want us to examine the sower in the hopes that we, disciples of Jesus Christ, will emulate what we uncover in this text in 2021. Four things I want to share with you about the sower. First, the sower was focused on the task. Uh -huh. The sower was focused on the task. Look at verses uh, 3 and, and 4 once again. It says, Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. Yeah, yeah. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. Now, you notice in the text, it didn't say he went out to plow. It didn't say he went out to water. It says he went out to sow. He was focused on the text. And I know this to be true because the text states that some seed fell by the wayside. And yet he did not take time to pick up the seed that fell in places that he had not intended. In other words, he stayed focused on what his task was, and that task was to, to sow. The soul was, was focused. He was determined. And here's my, my point, church. Many times we fail to obtain our desired outcome because we lose sight of the task. We lose sight of our our purpose. And, and I just want to tell you that this morning, and as we look towards 2021, don't lose sight of your task. Don't lose sight of your purpose. Do what is ever necessary to hold the course. Write it down. Post it. Read it daily. Find yourself an accountability partner. The soul was focused. Somebody say focus. focus. Listen to what we hear in Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18. You shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. In other words, God was telling the people, look, do whatever you need to do to hold to my word to stay the course. Yes, sir. Yes, 
sir. Too often times we become distracted. Yes, Proverbs 3 verse 3, uh, the writer writes this, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. How do I do that, Solomon? He said, bind them around your neck yes. and write them on the tablet of your heart. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11, Paul writes to the church at Thessalonica, therefore encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. The point I'm trying to make is this, do whatever you need to do in 2021 to hold the course. To say so stay focused. Yeah. And how many times this year, because of what was happening around us, we allowed ourselves to lose focus. Yeah. And because we allow ourselves to lose focus, church, we did not achieve those things we set out to do. Yeah. The sower was focused. Yes, yes. The second thing as we examine the text, we, we realize about the soil is this, the sower sows amply. Yes, uh, yes. In other words, he sows more than enough. I have this image in my head and as he's walking or she's walking and reaching for seed, they're pulling so much that seed is falling through the cracks of their fingers off the sides of their hands. Yeah, and sometimes we're so calculated that we can't even get to the task. Come on. Somebody walk with me this morning. It says in the text, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. Oftentimes we are so calculated in our sowing, uh, so calculated we talk ourselves out of action. And thus fail to reach our desired outcome. How many folk have entered into a new year and say, I'm going to lose some weight this year. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going I'm to join the gym. And then we can't decide on the gym. We can't decide on what time of the day we want to work out. We can't decide what type of shoes we want to wear, what type of tights we want to buy. The next thing you know, half the year done passed by. Somebody better hit me this morning. It says here, he sowed amply. In other words, he got to the task of, of sowing. And I tell you this morning, if you want to get healthier, just do it. Yeah. It's just that simple. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. He grabbed a handful of seed and he grabbed another handful of seed and he grabbed another handful of seed and, and he grabbed a, another handful of seed. And I'm just telling you this morning, grab a handful of seed. Don't worry about the seed falling through the cracks of your fingers or falling off the side of your head. I want you to know the one who supplies the seed has more than enough. Amen. Yes, if you notice in the text, Amen. it seems that the sword did not see to recover any other seed that fell by the wayside. Now, I paused here for a second because one of the things I recognized about the source seed was this, it was good seed. Uh, yes, yes. And I know, I don't like to waste good seed. Good seed. Last night, I, I was messing with the popcorn. I had I had plans to have a prop, but I left it at home this morning. But I went in the popcorn jar and I pulled a, a huge hand of popcorn. I, I just wanted to really understand what this felt like and what it looked like to the soil and the seeds were falling through the cracks of my finger, bouncing off the counters, falling on the floor. And I, I got down on my knees, spending time picking up seed by you know how much time I wasted. Are you catching me this morning? See, the soil didn't have time to waste. He, he, he didn't worry about the seed that was falling through the cracks of his, his finger. He did not spend time focusing on that. And, and this is my point, church. Often we nickel and dime ourselves out of prosperity. Here I was on the floor trying to pick up three kernels when I had a whole jar sitting on the counter. Somebody gonna catch that later. See, we nickel and dime ourselves out of prosperity. We are so afraid that we aren't going to have enough, whatever enough is, to finish the race that we stop running. We are so busy trying not to fail that we cannot succeed. 
Can you imagine the amount of energy and time wasted if the soil would have attempted to recover the seed that fell by the wayside? Church, hear me this morning. In 2021, we must sow amply. Proverbs chapter 11. Verses 24 and 25, we find these words. It says, one gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and the one who waters will himself be watered. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and verse 10. Listen, it says, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Oh, church, we got to know the word of God. It says, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. In verse 10, it says, and he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. The point I'm trying to make this morning, listen to me. God has more than enough. And church, God will supply our need. I think about this year that me and my family has had and how we sought to remain faithful in the midst of COVID-19. And one of the things we, we, we work hard not to do, because we didn't want to become distracted. See, we, we had a course we were traveling this year. We had some plans that we were determined to fulfill, even in the midst of a pandemic. One of the things we determined that we were not going to do, and we remained very faithful to it, was not watch the news. We didn't watch the news. We didn't turn it on. I didn't want to know what was going on. Some of them look at me like, how in the world did they not watch news? See, that's the problem with some of us. We watching too much news. Instead of spending time in this, oh, I know y'all don't want to hear this. We didn't watch the news because one of the things we recognize, we will become distracted. We will become anxious. We will be so concerned about what they were doing in Washington, D.C. And somehow if Donald Trump was God. See, we remain focused on who God was, what God could do because what God had already done. And see, too often times, church, we are too dependent upon other folk rather than, than God. The soul, so amply, because he realized it wasn't his seed. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 He didn't supply the seed. Yes. God gave him the seed. Yes. And God gave him the seed to be faithful with it. Yes. To go out and do what? Uh, so. Alright. So the soul was focused. The soul was so amply. The third we see in the text, and I'm almost out of here. He sowed good seed. He sowed good seed. Uh-huh. The quality of the seed was never in question for the soul. Uh -huh. It was kingdom seed. Uh -huh. It was gospel seed. Yeah. Watch this now. We notice in the text that the problem was never the seed, it was the soul. Right. Regardless of where it failed, though, it produced something. That's right. That's right. I, I want to show you this. Look at verse 7 again, verse 4 through 7. It says, And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. Yeah. But the words, but the birds did what? They came and ate it. It didn't fall where he intended, but it still produced something. It filled the bird's stomach. Let's keep reading. It said, it said that some fell on stony places. Right. But they did not have much earth. And they immediately did what? They still sprouted. In other words, it was good. Good seed, but it says, but they had no depth of earth. Yeah. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Look at verse 7. And some fell among the thorns. And the thorns sprang up and choked them. You got to watch this. Now, in other words, they fell among the thorns.
thorns and they grew, but the thorns outgrew. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. He had good, good seed. He sowed good seed. It is my point. Make sure you are sowing good seed, kingdom seed, because all seed will produce something. Have you ever planted tomato seed and it produces a beautiful vine but no fruit? Somebody gonna catch that in me. Have you ever spent time planting um, 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 watermelon vines and you notice the vines develop but produce no? Here's my point. All seed produces something and it's to our benefit that we make sure we are planting good seed. And I can't tell you how many folk I talk to that find themselves in some, in some predicaments and they're asking themselves, how did I get here? And I'm going to say, so bad, what type of seed did you plant? See, sometimes when we find ourselves in those places, we don't desire to be, when we receive those outcomes that we did not intend, we don't take time to assess the situation and to understand what part we played in it. What type of seed did we sow? Amen. Watch this. Let me prove it. Proverbs 11, verse 18. Listen to the verse. It says, the wicked earns deceptive wages. But one who sows righteousness gets a sure reward. Church, whatever seed you plant, it will produce a crop. Yes. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. It says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Running over will be put into your lap. Watch this now. For what the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And this is a funny thing. Folk expect to get something out when they haven't put something in. You won't love, but you are unloving. You won't forgive this, but you won't forget. Somebody better hear me this morning. You won't forgive. You want compassion, but you are uncompassionate. Whatever you put in, church, is what you should expect. Out. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. Listen to Paul. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Hear me this morning, the soul was so good seed. Yes, yes. He was focused. Yes. He was generous in his sowing. Yes. He sowed good seed. And finally, church, we see this in the text. He sowed expectantly. Yes, yes. He sowed expectantly. Come on, that's good. I am thoroughly convinced that as the sower set out on his course, uh, yeah. he fully expected the seed to produce the intended outcome. Yeah. And that is exactly what happened. Uh, Look at verses 8 and 9 again. But I was fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. I am convinced he sold expectantly. And this is my push. See, sometimes we're our own worst enemy. Yes, yes, speak, sir. We, we, we give up too fast. Yes. We don't stay the course. Yes. We start working out in January. Uh -huh. <laughs> February roll around and we've only lost three pounds. Yeah. Come on, sir. Come on. I like to make this thing practical. Yeah. So we sit on that scale and, and we become discouraged. Yeah. The, the, the truth be told, we didn't go into the thing with, with, with expectations of success. Right. Right. Have you ever dealt with folk, I don't care what you bring to the table, it ain't gonna never work? That's right. right. Yeah. I want to encourage you this morning. You need to rid yourself of folk like that in 2021. You'll never get ahead. Uh, Everything you bring, every suggestion you have, it just won't work. work. I, one of the things I, I learned about the sower, he's not only stay focused on the task, 
he sowed expectantly. And I know this to be true because as we read the story, there was seed falling all over the place. But he wasn't depending upon himself. Well, this is important, church. He wasn't dependent upon himself for the ultimate outcome. The only thing he could control was the soul. That's right. That's right. That's right. And see, some of us, we try to control everything. That's right. Instead of the one thing God has called us to focus on. That's right. That's right. We can't control everything. No, I, I can't control what my wife cook. But I can't control what I put in my mouth. I told my brother the other day, I said, you know, I got to get, gotta get healthier in, 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 in 2021. I, I got to lose some weight. And, and I said, it's so hard because my wife's so undisciplined. <laughs> so I, this is what I said. Did somebody catch that? Now, what my wife's un, 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 a lack of discipline has to do with me becoming healthier and losing weight. I need to focus on what I can control. And I can control what I put in this. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. He focused on the task. He focused on his assignment. He didn't worry about all the other stuff. And I'm just trying to tell you this morning, as you enter into 2021, stop worrying about all the other stuff and remain focused on the task. Don't try to control every aspect of the situation or circumstance because we can't. The outcome is not solely dependent upon us. God is in control. Two additional texts and I'm done. Galatians 6 verse 9. He says, and let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up, if we faint not. Oh, somebody needed to hear that this morning. I like the story because you notice something in the story. We can't miss this detail. It doesn't tell us how long it took for the crop to be produced. It doesn't say he sold in two weeks later. It doesn't say he sold in another. Oh, somebody, somebody need to hear this. See, see, it doesn't give us any indication of how long it takes. Come on now, sir. See, that's not the point of the story. Well, the point of the story is to remain focused on the task, trusting that God will give the increase. Amen. And this is why I love this text so much of Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Paul, he, he writes this to the Corinthian church that had become divided over who was baptizing them. He, he says this, I planted Apollo's watered, but God gave the increase. And I'm just trying to tell you this morning, listen, don't you worry about all that great stuff. You just keep planting. If God has called you to water, you just keep watering. Knowing that in due time, God will give the increase. Church, no shortcuts in 2021. No microwave visions because it won't happen overnight. So, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, give the Lord a hand praise for this place. Praise God. Let me take this mask off so you can hear me clearly. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We are so grateful to Reverend Smalls for this sermon. This was a powerful sermon. It's powerful, y'all. Amen. 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 In fact, some of us are not going to realize how powerful it is until you see 
the crop grows. Wow. That's right. He he talked about us. Hey, that's why I keep saying, you got time to do it, Doc. I want him to really get into this. <laughs> Amen. Because some of us are not pay, patient enough to let the let the crop grow. You know, we, 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 we plan on Monday and Tuesday, we upset because there's nothing to harvest. It doesn't ever work like that. You weren't, you didn't plant seed and then let's say it grew. You, you had to go through seasons. And through those seasons, you ended up seeing yourself mature to the point that you were prepared to produce fruit. I'm gonna tell you, your word confirmed something for me. Because yesterday, before I called you, uh, another minister sent me a clip, uh, Bishop Jake's sermon, Stay on, stay on Track. Y'all yeah. gonna get this in a second. And so Bishop Jace was talking about how many times, because the process takes so long, that we won't stick around to see the production of the fruit. That we will give up the fruit because of the process and then miss out on the blessing because we're so busy looking for the fruit. And he just said that very thing to us right here at the end of the sermon. Many times we are so anxious to see the fruit that we don't even wait. And so I'm saying for someone here today, it may not resonate right now, but maybe this week, maybe next week, maybe in 2021, you're going to be doing something that all of a sudden you're going to realize what you are doing is the fruit of the seed you sowed. And let me tell you something, when it happens, you come to First United Presbyterian Church, amen. You come and you bless the man of God for sowing a seed in you today that you that harvest it later. I don't care what you're doing. I don't, even if he's in a meeting, you sit there in, in, in the waiting room. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm, 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 I'm not trying to preach over him, but I'm trying to share something with you. Because if God bless you through the man of God, your blessing him turns around and blesses you again. Amen. Okay, y'all can get that. Amen. This was a dynamite sermon. But one thing I know he's going to have to do is start this evening. If there's nothing more than a prayer saying, God, start giving me what I need for next week. Yeah. And what we want him to do is to hear God so clearly that next week we get whatever God needs us to get to move along that process. Amen. And here's the thing. You want the man of God to know that he's hearing God. Can I believe we talk about this all the time. You know one of the things we get concerned about is whether or not we actually heard what God said us told us to say. And what confirms it for us all the time is when you come to us and say, Pastor, I don't know why you were in my closet this week. I don't know why you were all up and down my street in my business. We enjoy hearing that not because it builds us up, but because it confirms to us we were actually hearing the word of God. And so if you want God to continue to bless you by continuing to plant more, so more seed in you that produces more blessing, then you need to come and you need to bless us, man. You need to, even if you do nothing more than say to him, Pastor, your word bless me. And I want you to know it. Amen. Amen. Let's do this. Let's do this. Amen. I'm looking around and I've seen people. Uh, amen. Looks like everyone here is saved. Is, is that right? Is everyone saved here? Amen. Amen. I want to issue the call. If I'm going to issue anyway. Let's do this. Let's pray since we're all saved. Whoever is watching us, regardless if it's on Facebook Live or they're watching the playback on YouTube right now. Let's do the call of salvation for them. Amen. So, in the privacy of your own heart, I have you pray this prayer with me. Dear Father God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right now, God. Thank you, God, for loving me the way that you have. The word today was for me. It may have blessed my neighbor. It may have enriched my neighbor. It may have clarified some things for my neighbor, but the word was for me. For God, I am part of the good seed that you sowed. Even when the world told me I would amount to nothing, God, you decided I was worth everything. Amen. 
you sacrificed the one thing that meant everything to you for my well-being. And God, I accept the gift of salvation you presented, you presented me. I accept the gift, God, that your son accomplished on the cross. And God, I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that your son is Lord to your glory. Now, Father God, your word says that if I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that I am saved, then I am saved. So God, I declare right now I'm saved. Behold, the old me has passed away and a new me has been born. And God, I am leaving here today different than I was before I got here. And God, I pray that in this newness, that God, you would develop a relationship where you talk with me, where you walk with me. And when I can't walk on my own, you carry me. God, roll me into the disciple that brings you praise, honor, and glory. And when it's said and done, please come get me and take me back to heaven where I may spend eternity with you. Now, Father God, I thank you for loving me, for blessing me, for keeping me. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. If there's anyone, amen, anyone, whether you're here on Facebook Live, uh, uh, or YouTube, and you pray that prayer for the very first time, you pray what we call a sinner's prayer. Amen. Every single one of us had to pray that prayer. Amen. Now, if we weren't in pandemic protocol, I would have you come down the middle of the church. This is not a call to join either First Fellowship or First United. This is a call to salvation. I would have you come down here so that I can speak to you or Reverend Small can speak to you because we want to encourage you. In fact, I use this analogy every Sunday. In the physical, we don't birth babies and sit them in the corner. We birth babies and we love them, we nurture them, we feed them, we change their diapers, we care for them, we provide for them. Even when they become little snot-nosed, bad-behind children, we still love them and care for them so that they can grow into self-sufficient, self-sustained adults. We do the same thing in the spirit. We don't birth someone in the spirit of uh, Christ and then leave them over there. We walk with you. We talk with you. We help you grow so that you become a, a productive disciple and, and steward of God. Amen. So let me say this. If you're on first fa Facebook Live, amen. I was going to say First Fellowship, Charles Westside. If you're on Facebook Live or YouTube, I want you to send me an email or a private message on Facebook. Go to my personal Facebook page, Al Ken, hit the private message button and tell me that you have received salvation today and we will begin walking with you. If you're on YouTube, send me an e uh, email. Amen. Now pay attention. I've changed my email address. It's not, it's now Pastor Al Kennan the Third at gmail.com. P-A-S-T-O-R-A-L-K-E-N-N-O-N-I-I-I at gmail.com. And I will walk with you walk with you still. If you would prefer to have Reverend Smalls walk with you. Amen. Here's the thing. We boys. I got his number, I got his email address, and I know where he lives. Amen. Praise God. I will put you in contact with Reverend Small. But the th thing both of us want you to know is that now you have accepted Christ Jesus, the walk starts now. And we want to make sure that, again, you are good seed. Amen. Praise God. Amen. With that said,